In this video, we're going to get an overview of the Material Editor. All right, so we finished up all of the modeling and the smoothing of our ship. And I went ahead and I removed the reference images from the background because we don't need those any longer. So now what we want to do is we want to learn how to add textures and materials to our objects to get them to that final look. So let's go ahead and open up the Material Editor. We can open it up by clicking on this button right up here, or we could hit M on the keyboard and that will bring up the material editor. Let's make sure that that's here on screen and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that way we can see it easy. So let's go ahead and remove the materials that we had before including that standard gray material. Let's just start off with a blank slate here. So the material editor is very similar to the, the interface that we have before. We've got a menu bar and the menu bar is going to give us access to a lot of the common commands and tools inside of the 3ds Max Material Editor. Then we have our toolbar which allows us to do things like pick uh, from a material in the scene, we can assign materials to a, a selection, we can show shaded materials in, uh, in the viewport, meaning if we want to see our textures in the viewport we can see that. Um, and there are a number of other things, but those are really just the main ones that you'll use most of the time. Then we have the Material Map Browser, and the Material Map Browser is going to show you all of the available materials and the maps that you can use. Now, this is context sensitive, and what that means is it depends on which renderer you are currently using. In our case, we're using the Scanline renderer, and what I want to do is I just want to bring up the render setup, and let's go to the Common tab, and at the very bottom, you're going to see Assign Renderer. With this, you'll see that we're using Scanline Renderer by default. Let's go ahead and switch this over to um, Mental Ray. Now, before I do that, I want to show you something. Let's just see this in the viewport, or in the view, while we do this. So let's switch this over to Mental Ray, and watch what happens here over in your map browser you'll see that we get these Autodesk materials that we can now use. And these are really great. There are things like ceramic and concrete. We can just use a generic and we can build one up. Um, we have hardwood and glazing for like glass. And we even have solid glass. Lots of great materials to use. Now with this we do have some of our general materials and those are still there. Um, we have Scanline. We could still use those. And then we have Mental Ray. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between all of these and why can I use them in the scanline renderer? Well, the the shaders themselves or the materials, they have specific coding in there to allow it to render properly. And without the mental ray renderer to interpret that, it won't work. So that's why these are context sensitive. So in our case, we're going to be using the physical material, but I want to show you just a little bit about um, just a basic material and just to understand how that works and how we can begin to manipulate those into what we need. So beyond that we have our view and this is kind of like a graph. We're going to be placing in our materials and we're going to be placing in nodes and connecting them together to create um, you could call it a shader network and that will give you your final look of your materials. Then we have the navigator, and the navigator is going to show us an, uh, just a glimpse of the graph here, or the view. So if I were to uh, drag in a standard material, and I've, oh here it is, under scanline, you'll see that it shows up here. And the more I drag in, it's going to try to keep that in that navigator view. So that way you can see if one has gotten way off in the distance and you're trying to find it. You can also move around using the navigator and that makes things easier too. So if we zoom in you can see kind of what you're viewing there. And then we have our parameters. The parameters are really great. Um, again it's context sensitive so you have to have something selected. So if I double click on this material notice the dotted line around the edge. It now shows all of the parameters that I have available for this particular material. Let me go ahead and delete these other two just by double clicking on those and then hitting delete on the keyboard. And let's just work with this one. Now a material, a standard material, there are a couple of things that you'll need to remember. The first thing is you need to determine the shader. 
okay, when that's available. And then you're going to determine all of the parameters that come along with that shader, and then you'll start to add in textures and start working with those individually. So with this, we're using just a blend shader. Now we could switch it to blend, or we could switch it over to fong. Um, it will change some things in your parameters based on what you have selected. So right here we have anisotropic, and you'll see that all of the parameters have now changed to anisotropic. Now it looks very similar. We have ambient, diffuse, and specular, self-illumination, even opacity in this. And we also have glossiness and specular level. Some of these are pretty common that we'll find with blend as well. You'll see that here. So whenever you're, uh, you start working with these and adding in textures, you could do this a couple of different ways. You could click right on the input for the map itself and it will bring up the material map browser. Now normally I don't like to add things in through the parameters themselves. I like to know exactly what I'm hooking it up to through the inputs on the material here. So if I were to double click on diffuse color, this is basically the same thing as clicking on diffuse right here and it brings up this. So here I would go ahead and choose bitmap and then it's going to automatically take me to my project files which I've associated here. Remember in the very first lesson we talked about, well not first lesson but the first module, we talked about setting up project files. And here it's going to the scene assets images folder. And here I could choose any material that I wanted. In this case I'm going to go ahead and add in the panel detail. You can see a preview of that right here and then I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll see that that has hooked itself up to that input. Now if at any time you want to remove that, you could just simply drag off of that input and just drag it off into empty space and it will remove that. If you left click on the node or the output of this map, plug it into the input of your diffuse color and it will hook itself back up again. Um, another way that we could add a texture map, instead of double clicking on the input, you could left click and drag off of that and it will give you a context sensitive menu. And so it's saying, all right, we can go ahead and we could use uh, some of the maps that are under mental ray, under environment, uh, let's do scan line, or just go to the general, which is usually where we go, and we could choose from all of these different maps. Now there are a lot of different maps. If we want a custom map, like our bitmap, we would use this, and this is the one that we use most often. But there are others like a checker pattern if you need that, or even dent or fall off or gradient. These are all great maps that we can use. Now let's go ahead and choose gradient ramp really quickly. And if I were to hook that up, I can double click on a texture and see its parameters as well. Most maps will have this coordinates um, texture, which will allow us to adjust the UV tiling or offset. Now U and V is basically just the coordinate system in the X and Y direction, but with 2D images it's U and V. So U in the X direction and V in the vertical direction. Okay. Now with this gradient ramp you'll see that we do have some extra parameters like the gradient ramp here. We can start to adjust it where the ramp is beginning and ending. Uh, we can add new options here. We could even double click on these and change the color of this and change a gradient ramp altogether. This does have some great uses, but in this case we're not going to be using it, so I'm going to double click on it and hit delete. Let's go ahead and hook up our texture and put that on diffuse. Double click on your material, and let's go ahead and click on, or double click on the icon. You can see a pretty good um, preview of that material. Now with this we can start to adjust things like our specular level, which will allow light to reflect off of that. The glossiness itself de uh, determines the intensity in which it reflects. So a high gloss will make light reflect in a very direct way. So it kind of looks like a high gloss um, cue ball, if you think. Uh, if you play billiards or, or pool is, is also what it's called. And this can give us something very, very glossy. And the higher we go with our specular, the brighter that highlight is going to be. Now if I take that glossiness down, notice how that light begins to spread across the surface. Now we still have a very high specular level, meaning that it gathers a lot of light still. If I drag that down, 
it will start to reduce and allow that that intensity to draw down. It's still spreading because of the glossiness, but it's not quite as intense. So that's a basic overview of creating materials. Now what I want to do is I want to get the material itself onto my object and I want to start creating the final look of our materials. So with that let's go ahead and move on to our next video where we're going to look at the physical material because I think that it has a really great workflow and it's going to work really well with our project.